Welcome to Season 7 of the Thriving Mindfully Podcast. This is Ananda Leek, and it's been a minute since I've been in contact with you, since we connected, since we've built community and this movement together. This is a true gift that I've been given in my ministry of Thriving Mindfully and Ananda Leek Consulting, my wellness company. It is a pleasure to be back. And so I want to share with you that things are shifting. Things are always shifting. Stuff is changing inside and outside of me and inside and outside of you. And so season seven is a a deep journey, is an adventure, y'all. And it is born out of the cocoon that I've been living in for the last several, several months. My mom and loving, wise, and well ancestor, Teresa B. Garden Lake, made her transition on July 9th, 2023, at 6.46 p.m. in my presence. I had the gift to be present, to serve as her spiritual midwife as she walked from this life into the life of an ancestor. And my mom is with me as I record this podcast and as I move forward I am taking my time and being soft as fuck with myself as I get used to life without her in the physical realm on mother earth and it ain't easy it ain't easy and I plan to share what I am experiencing and learning and how it is expanding my thriving mindfully this heart-centered approach to being present well in the real me and how it can help you be present well in the real you in your life, relationships, and career. So get ready, y'all. We are stepping into a new territory. A new chapter is starting now. Join me in Thriving Mindfully in Season 7. Stay tuned for more. My mom, Teresa B. Garden Leak, who is now my loving, wise, and well ancestor, taught me from her own life how to be a strategic CEO of my life. And I'm now able to share what she taught me in my own unique way. And it's coming out in my journaling. It's coming out in how I am showing up in in life, in my relationships, in, in my business, Nandalee Consulting and Thriving Mindfully Academy. And so I started off by sharing in a previous episode what strategic CEO meant. And now I want to take a moment to break it down for you and for myself. What does it all mean. And so we're going to start with strategic. The first letter in strategic because strategic CEO, what I've been given through my mom and through my loving, wise, and well ancestors, that includes my mom now, um, and spirit is a divine download that uses an acronym and it spells out two words, strategic and CEO. And it's a little different from what I normally would have thought of in terms of a strategic CEO, because with my training as a lawyer and the experience that I've had as an investment banker, as a nonprofit leader and an entrepreneur, strategic goes towards for me, like marketing, finance, and and a bunch of other things. It doesn't or it did not include what I've recently been able to integrate into my life and my understanding from my mom, from, from the wisdom of, of our loving, wise and well ancestors and spirit. And so here's what I wanted to to share with you. The S in strategic that is dedicated to showing up as the real me. For you, showing up as the real you. And how do you do that? 
You do that by being self-aware. You do that by defining yourself on your own terms. You do that by loving yourself. You do that by valuing yourself, embracing your self-worth. And you do that by celebrating yourself, by celebrating your small, medium, and big wins on a regular basis. So show up as the real you by taking time to slow down and to become aware of who you are, what you need, what you're going through. That can all happen through the practice of mindfulness, this birthright that we've been given to be aware of what's happening inside of ourselves and outside of ourselves. And right now, what's happening outside of me is a lot of sirens. I live in the heart of DC and I am the neighbor to a police station and a fire station and the windows are open. And so I am aware of what is happening outside. I'm tapping into my, my birthright of mindfulness, this, this, this ability that we each have to be aware of what's happening. And I'm using that awareness to recognize that in this moment, I'm a little bit out of shape with the sound of that because there's a part of me that wanted to record this in a quiet space. And there's also a part of me that wanted to record it because it was on my heart and it was on my mind. And so I am aware of how the different parts of me are feeling. And I even hear my inner critic, Broomy, trying to tell me re-record and the rest of my, um, my archetypes, my, my inner counsel, I have eight archetypes. They're saying, just keep going, just keep going, just keep going. So that's what we're going to do. So that's self-awareness. Now, self-definition, defining yourself, showing up as a real you because you define who you are. You get one life. You get one you, and you're forever changing. And I know for myself, my mom taught me how to define myself by choosing what matters most to me? What matters most to me? Not what society says, not what religion says, not what family says, but what matters most to me? And one of the things that matters most to me is freedom of expression, of fully and freely expressing myself from my heart and allowing myself to be creative. And so, at different points in my life, I have defined myself through names. I have added two names to the name that I was given as a child when I was born. I was born Madeline Cheryl Leak, and at the age of 27, I became Kiamsha Madeline Leak. Kiamsha is a Swahili word that means that which awakens me. I took that word as I began to enter into my first Saturn return. If you're into astrology, you know the Saturn returns. And I also took that name to embrace my creative spirit. At that time, I was diving deep into my creative spirit as a healing bomb for what was about stress in my life from trying to have a career as a young lawyer and later on as an investment banker and a digital communications professional. That name, Kiamsha, reminded me that what awakens me is the divine creativity from within, that spirit, angels, my loving, wise, and well ancestors have given me and nurtured within me and, and called me to, to express. When I turned 40, I embraced the name Ananda, Ananda Kiyamsha Madeline Cheryl Leak. Ananda is a Sanskrit word that means God's eternal bliss or God's joy. I took that name to move into a healing space of deep love, loving com kindness, compassion, non-judgment, patience, and forgiveness. And with those five things, joy for me comes. I took that 
at the end of a very, very, very traumatic relationship and a shift in who I was as a woman as I moved into my 40th year. The life that I thought I was going to have with a partner did not turn out the way that I thought. And as a result, I took that name to help move through the suffering to enter into a space where my spirituality was deepened. That my humanity needed to, to have access to more loving kindness, compassion, non-judgment, patience and forgiveness on my journey. Now, I define myself not only with names, but in how I choose to value things in life, experiences, people, what's important to me. Self-definition covers so much um, from how I live, how I consume things, how I use things, who I'm around, what I put into my body, what I wear, what I think, what I'm reading, how I'm working in my business, all of that is involved in self-definition. And then there's self-love, loving self, which is a lifelong journey, lifelong journey. But it's recognizing that self-love, self-awareness, self-definition, self-worth and self-celebration are all birthrights. Loving myself, honoring myself, respecting myself, treating myself like the divine child that I am, the precious gem. That is self-love. It's something that I am constantly learning to do by prioritizing myself and taking care of myself and nurturing myself. I stumble and I struggle and I fall in this area. I'm human and I'm learning through this journey of grief as sacred medicine with my mom's passing that self-love is taking a, a deeper dive um, and a different type of expression for me. It is really allowing myself to be vulnerable to myself to come home to myself in that vulnerability and to give myself even more grace than I thought was possible. Even the, even just more and more and more, like it's an overflowing of grace that I'm discovering in my self-love journey. Self-worth, self-worth, how I value myself. How I value myself determines how I show up as the real me. I, like you, we are incredible beings. And this world, if we let it, will tell us that we're not. We will get limited. We will shrink. We will um, not stand up in our full selves and not show up and show out because we are afraid, we're judging ourselves, we're listening to our inner critics, or we're thinking that no, there's no way we could possibly do that, or, or that's too much, or we're, we're being too much. Well, I'm telling you, at 58, and I'll be 59 in a couple of months, and that's even closer to 60, I'm done with that. I am thriving mindfully, thriving unapologetically, thriving wildly, thriving wisely, thriving creatively. And there's a whole list of thriving statements that I've created as, as mantras and affirmations to help me go deeper in valuing myself and, and valuing myself from the inside out, not based on what I think I should do in terms of how society values things, like how much money you make, uh, how many people you have served, uh, where you live, how much education you have, who you're with, who's in your life, who you're surrounded by. I'm learning 
how to seek value from within and that's that's an ongoing journey and um yeah that's that's the self-worth piece for me and then the other piece that helps me show up as the real me and being a strategic ceo is self-celebration wow let me tell you if you've listened to me talk about self-celebration about celebrating the small medium and big wins in your life and for me right now being able to to do this podcast in the midst of the sounds from outside and to move forward with it and to be okay with it that's a big win for me y'all a big one especially the 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 inner critic um broom hilda or broomy for short she is trying to come for me and telling me this this won't sound right but fuck Broomy, because we're going to keep it moving. Well, anyway, look, I'm, I'm talking about self-celebration. And self-celebration is this practice of identifying how you are winning in your life. What are those small, medium, and big wins from moving through this podcast with the sounds to being able to, to just be free in my expression? and how I'm sharing and allowing myself that space to do so. Another win is being able to to take some time for myself to just journal in the morning, even if it's just for a few moments, it doesn't have to be long. That's a big win for me. Another win is being able to support my nephew Preston as he runs for state not state senate but uh he's a he's a freshman at a college and he's running for freshman senator so being able to send him a donation to his campaign that's a big win being able to do that another big win is being able to withstand this journey with my teeth yes y'all that's a big win I'm getting um a bridge and I've had to um, have it be delayed the final bridge and so it, it's been a little painful but thank thankful I'm thankful for the Tylenol and the soft food that I have to eat so that's a big win navigating this process that's a big win so those are a couple of my wins um, that I am celebrating and I would also say that to show up as the real you to be a strategic ceo and show up as a real you and practice self-celebration what you could do is you could look at your life your relationships in your career your business if you have one and at the end of the week take some time to just note if if it works to write it down or to type it into a note in your phone or your computer do that and then find a way to celebrate like today i'm gonna get up take a shower take a walk and go get something fun and healthy to eat for dinner that's my self-celebration i'm i'm gonna go to one of my favorite grocery stores because i'm a grocery store girl I love to go to grocery stores and I'm going to find something fun. It may be watermelon, you know, and some avocado and maybe a tomato salad with my homemade dressing when I get home. But I'm going to have fun with celebrating myself, with having a healthy meal. And then I'm going to listen to some of my favorite music. That's how I'm going to celebrate. So self-celebration doesn't have to be anything that you buy. It could be maybe playing a, uh, an album. I'm looking right now at one of my old Chardé LPs and that could be self-celebration. Or wearing my favorite crystals, that could be self-celebration. Or putting on a little bit of shimmery lip gloss, that could be another way to celebrate for me. So let's just do a recap here. In being a strategic CEO of your life, what does that mean? The S, because we're looking at strategic CEO as an acronym, as a reminder of 
how we can show up in our lives. The S is show up as the real you with self-awareness. That's that mindfulness, self-definition, defining yourself. You don't have to name yourself, but defining yourself based on your values, what's important to you. Self-love, loving yourself with kindness, compassion, non-judgment, patience, and forgiveness. Self-worth, valuing yourself, prioritizing yourself, listening to yourself, treating yourself like the precious gem that you are. Self-celebration, identifying your small, medium, and big wins, and then finding a way to celebrate them. Not necessarily having to spend money to do that, but finding a way, maybe drinking your favorite tea, maybe sitting and, and reading a book. Maybe it's laughing at one of your favorite shows or movies on Netflix, whatever it is, wearing your favorite color and clothing, using your favorite dishes, whatever it is, self-celebration. So that's what I wanted to share with you all today. I'd love to hear what comes up when you hear strategic CEO. What does that mean to you? Strategic CEO in your life, your relationships and career, because we're a community and I'd love to hear what you're thinking. So wherever you find this podcast, leave me a note, send me a direct message on Instagram or LinkedIn or TikTok. You can um, send me an email or you can just leave a comment. Thanks again for listening. And as I always like to say, may we all continue to embrace thriving mindfully in everything that we think, feel, say, and do. It's been a pleasure chatting with you and I will see you next time. And P.S. Stay tuned for some offerings that I'd like to share with you some invitations. If you feel called to be a part of them, wonderful. If you don't, that's wonderful too. I'll see you next time. Bye. Did you know that mindful self-care is your birthright and your superpower for being the real you and serving others in your life, relationships, and career? You get 1,440 minutes each day. You are worth 45 minutes of mindful self-care twice a month. That's right. I want you to commit to 45 minutes of mindful self-care twice a month with my support during the Thriving Mindfully Academies mindful self-care classes that are offered on the second and the fourth Mondays of each month. Join me on September 11th, 25th, October 9th, 23rd, November 13th, and 27th. And the last class is December 11th from 8 to 8.45 p.m. Eastern Standard Time via Zoom. Go to anandalik.com forward slash movement to get your ticket. Register now and I'll see you in the monthly Thriving Mindfully Academy's Mindful Self-Care class. See you then. Bye. I'm super excited to offer the Soft as Fuck Sunday series in D.C. That's right. If you're in the D.C., Maryland, Virginia area on September 24th or December 10th, join me for an amazing afternoon of meditation, journaling, intention setting, drawing, community sharing with a sound bath meditation moon and seasonal wisdom and me holding sacred space for you to connect with the autumn equinox on september 24th from 2 to 3 p.m and to prepare for the winter solstice on december 10th from 2 to 3 p.m all of these classes will be held at key Cratone cbdt 1517 u street northwest in dc you can go to anandalik.com forward slash soft to get your tickets for $23. I'll see you at Soft as Fuck Sundays. Bye.
of the ways that I've been able to prepare myself and to take action from a grounded place in my body, in my breath, in my life, is through human design. Human design is an amazing self empowerment and it's I-N hyphen P-O-W-E-R M-E-N-T empowerment because it's from the inside out. It's a self empowerment and self discovery tool that was introduced to me in 2021 through a coaching experience and over the past two years I have experimented with it and then integrated it into my life, my relationships and my career and my business. And it is a lifelong journey. It's a lifelong experiment. I am now bringing it into a space where I'm offering it to folks like you to support you and preparing yourself and taking action in your life, your relationships, and your career and business. It marries my thriving, mindfully, heart-centered approach to being present well in the real you. And I use it with my coaching clients. I use it with the Thriving Mindfully Academy members. And... Now I want to invite you to explore it with me as your human design doula. In human design, you are called to give birth, if you will, to yourself, the real you. And we do that every single day. We do it every single moment. We get 1,440 minutes each and every day. And in each minute, you're birthing yourself. I mean, you're always changing. You're always growing. And so in order to navigate that process, I'm here acting as a doula, someone who can midwife you through this experience, help you understand what human design is based on where you are in your life, help you take the parts of human design that resonate with you the most because at different times different things resonate with us and help you understand it help you see how you can use it as a tool to connect with your own body's awareness and wisdom if you're interested I want to invite you to visit my website Go to anandalik.com forward slash human design to learn more about how we can work together. I offer two types of readings. Um, There's a basic reading and then there's a more advanced reading once you have an understanding of human design. Check it out. There's also a video that walks you through my own human design experience and gives you some basic information about human design. There are other podcast episodes for the Thriving Mindful podcast that you can check out. Just go to uh, anandalik.com forward slash podcast or wherever you find this podcast, you can look and see in the archive the human design episodes. So I look forward to connecting with you more about human design. If you're looking for ways to inspire and empower yourself to be present well in the real you, and you want to take advantage of some of the things that I use, check out my Amazon store. Go to amazon.com forward slash shop forward slash Ananda League and there you'll find the Thriving Mindfully store which is filled with recommendations on things that I have used in my own life, relationships, and career to be present well in the real me. Check 
out my three mindfulness books, my yoga and self-love inspired novel, Love Troubadours, my mindful creativity memoir, That Which Awakens Me, and my mindful technology memoir, Digital Sisterhood. In addition to various books, various products, essential oils, crystals, wisdom card decks, all kinds of things that I've used in my own life and spiritual and self-care practices to be who I am today, including the sound bowls that I use, the Koshi chimes, the ocean drum, you name it, it's there. Check it out. Thank you for patronizing me on Amazon. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye. Thanks for tuning in to the Thriving Mindfully Podcast. If you're ready to be inspired and empowered with my coaching support, join me in the Thriving Mindfully Academy. Visit anandalik.com forward slash academy. Now, if you're ready to dive deeper and move past your comfort zone with my one-on-one coaching program, book a discovery call with me today. Visit anandalik.com. If you need something juicy to read, check out my three mindfulness books, Love's Troubadours, a self-love and yoga-inspired novel, That Which Awakens Me, a mindful creativity memoir, and Digital Sisterhood, a mindful technology memoir. Go to anandalake.com forward slash books. All of my books are available on amazon.com. Well, that about wraps us up. And as I always like to say, may we all continue to embrace thriving mindfully in everything that we think, feel, say, and do. See you next time.